let's delve right in. Before we talk about the development, youth development policy, I want us to look back at something that happened um, in the news, something very general, just as a way of introduction. Our DP, William Ruto, went to um, the UK to do a speech at the Chatham House, I think it's called, and there were a few royal heads which were there, who were there, and in his speech, the notion that people got, especially Kenyans, was that it was more of an anti-referendum speech or anti-referendum. His notion was more um, against the referendum. The referendum is something that something is something that we feel we need as Kenyans, especially when it comes to youth. There are a lot of changes that we need in the constitution so that the constitution can back us up, so that uh, the constitution can be on our side, so that us as youth we can be as productive as we possibly can, using all the resources in our nation. And so seeing that the notion was anti-referendum, how does that make you feel as a public policy consultant who is um, in support of the youth development policy that is in review right now? When it comes to um, a politician maybe who may share his, uh, someone as important as our vice president, may share a view that this is something that we don't need to change. There are certain things we don't need to include. Basically, what he's saying essentially is even that what we're going to discuss today, the policy, the Kenya development policy, uh, that is also not needed. Um, uh, the DP Ruto said that um, the specific changes to the referendum are not needed. So uh, when you look at the DP speech, he, he mentioned about uh, the aspect of including a position of a premier, a, pri a prime minister, mm -hmm. and two deputies. Yeah. So uh, when you look at the aspect of adding additional roles mm -hmm. to what we currently have in the constitution, yeah. that in itself I will support the DP, in that our, our offices are so many, we are overly represented. But in, in the aspect of tr uh, changing our constitution, to fill the gaps and the challenges that we have, especially affecting the young people, that was really necessary. But the DP really addressed adding more roles to what we currently have, which we know we are overly represented. Kenya is one of those countries that has so many elected leaders, mm -hmm. and adding more roles will not solve the issues mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. So I would really support what he said mm -hmm. in the terms of adding more roles, but not in terms of filling the gaps that the current constitution has. Okay, so yeah. you're for the notion that um, there are gaps in the constitution that need to be filled, and you're not in support of that particular side of his speech, well, you are in support of yeah, that, but what you're not in support of is um, the <laughs> the new offices the of new positions offices, that are yeah. going to be created, created so yes. that um, you know people can continue to stay in power. Will yes. what, what have you, Miss Lucas? Do you have anything to say at all about this? Yes, mm. I believe that uh, the referendum is uh, needed. Um, for the referendum. Okay. But only in regards to the gaps that we have in the constitution. Mm, so you agree with? Yes, yeah. I agree with her. Yeah. And um, as the deputy, I, I also agree with the DP for once. I believe that um, <laughs> we actually don't need additional roles. We yeah. don't need additional. Why, 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 why should we have two DPs? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. We're yeah. overrepresented. Yes, we're yeah. overrepresented. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And even in that overrepresentation, there's not really much work going on yes, anyway. Exactly. So we first of all need to. Strengthen. As well as youth representation. Yes. 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 Mm, exactly. Then we need to actually strengthen these uh, institutions that we already have. Uh -huh. Because when it comes to youth representation, mm -hmm. we have NYC. Yes. NYC is. Uh, a strong body mm -hmm. at the national level that could actually be representing youth interests in the different political processes. Mm -hmm. But now with NYC being a, an appointive, uh, it's an appointive body. So uh, at the moment it's appointive. The president, uh, the, it's the government that appoints the, the members of uh, NYC and now we don't feel like we are being represented. Yeah, yeah. You feel like they are being alienated. Mm -hmm. They're just—it's—it's it's just a, a system for rewarding 
young people who are paying allegiance to a certain political party. Mm -hmm. Yes. I see. So we need uh, strengthening of NYC. Mm -hmm. We need uh, the positions at NYC to be elective. Mm -hmm. Also, we need NYC to be devolved. Uh huh. Yes. So that because when it, it only operates at the national level, we need it to also do at county levels. Yes, we need it to be at the county level. Yeah. Since everything right now is devolved, mm -hmm. let our voices be heard also at the county level. Let us influence the decisions at the county level. Yeah. Through NYC, mm -hmm. but let it be an elective body. An elective body. Yes. I see. Oh, okay. Those are very interesting views. And um, as much as I'd like for us to continue talking about the referendum, there is another interesting issue I'd like to bring up. In the wake of the Dusi 2 attacks um, for terrorism in Kenya, a lot has been going on in discussion. And um, there's still, I think the dust is still settling. We're still getting over it. We're still, you know, shaking our heads and trying to, you know, put our heads up and put our shoulders back. We're trying to get back on our feet and move on as a country. Our president actually um, went for a summit that we are calling the African Union Heads of State and Government Summit. It was held in Addis Ababa, and some of the newly elected AU chairmen, um, some of the newly elected people in the African Union were also there attending. These are people like the chairman of Egyptian President Abdel Fattah El Saki, and president of the Palestine Rebe Liberation Organization, and as well as Mahmoud Abbas. These are all people who, um, shared sentiments when it came to terrorism with our president. And what our president was saying is that, as world leaders, we need to find a way to fight against terrorism. We've talked about the referendum and how important it is for this referendum to come in to change and fill in the gaps <coughs> of particular areas that are not exactly working. And some of those areas in focus, especially today, uh, like I mentioned before, is the Kenya Youth Development Policy. Now, in the Kenya Youth Development Policy, I feel, as I was reading through it, um, there are areas where it talks about curbing um, terrorism, terrorist attacks, and curbing radicalization. We've seen recently that most of the people who are getting radicalized, most of the people who are getting taken in by terrorist groups are our youth people. And our youth who are, we keep saying, our Wamboyis, our Kerubos, our Akinyis, they are everyday people. These are not people who you don't expect. These are people who, it's, it could be your neighbor. Yeah. You know, it could be someone you, you know, go to, I don't know, maybe someone you, 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 <laughs> have the, you share something with in yeah. any way, shape, or form. You'd be so surprised the kind yes. of connections you have with people. And this person, you wake up one day, you hear they're a terrorist, yeah. and they were recruited. And it's quite shocking. It really is quite shocking. And when it comes to our draft for um, youth development policy, what does it say about curbing radicalization? and curbing extremist activities when it comes to terrorism in Kenya. How will our youth development policy assist in keeping our youth safe when it comes to um, the radicalization or the recruitment of terrorists? Um, first of all, we realize that this is the second youth policy. We had a first a policy called the National Youth Policy of 2006. So when we look at the National Youth Policy of 2006, we realized that mm. back then, uh, youth radicalization wasn't an issue. That was in 2006. And uh, we needed to review the policy after every five years. And uh, we can see that one of the reasons why we needed to have a new youth policy was to review the landscape, like we have social economic issues that are emerging, like youth radicalization. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was where the Ministry of Public Service and Youth uh, decided, okay, it's prime time that we looked at the issues affecting the young people once more in the youth policy and they came up with the Kenya Youth Development Policy of 2018. Mm -hmm. Now, the what I love about the Kenya Youth Development Policy is that it explicitly states the strategies that the government will take to 
curb the youth radicalization because when you look at the first national youth policy uh, youth involved in crime and uh, criminal behavior are only stated as an issue there was nothing that the government like set out developed in the proposed in the policy as a solution to that issue so the Kenya youth development policies is very expansive on what the government will do. And mm -hmm. we, we see that one of the measures the government is including is uh, it says it will create more opportunities for youth in education, employment, and other areas. So we know one of the main issues why young people are involved in radical behavior is, of course, economic empowerment. Yes. Yes, economic okay. empowerment. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up because, uh, sorry if I could just interject, there is uh, an area where our policy states that there will be an increase in opportunities for education, employment, and political participation amongst the youth. Yes. So I've heard most people talking about the fact that lack of employment could be a reason why our youth are so easily cheated into this game. Um, they have nothing to do on a day-to-day -day basis. There are no jobs. Starting a business could be a little bit difficult because you don't have the capital to begin with. And so someone comes along and they tell you that, hey, there's a job in Somalia, you'll be, get, you, you'll be paid really, really well. And the part where education comes in, you should, um, as someone who has gone to school or someone who at least is learning something in school or someone who is interested in education would know that Somalia is really struggling when it comes to things like employment. So that should, first of all, as a youth, put a question mark in your head. Because if you're educated as a youth, then you would know that there are no jobs in Somalia. Then you'd know that this person is lying to me. Therefore, I'm not going to take whatever they're trying to sell to me. And so that being one of the facets, education, Employment being another area where you don't have any work to do, you're not educated, you do believe the myth, you believe the lie, you go to Somalia, you're expecting employment, you go there, you find out there's nothing. And you're given new clothes to wear, you're told this is what you're going to do, and this is why you're really here. And if you try and leave, you know, the ABCD will happen to you. So aside from that, what were you going to say about employment? And if you have anything to say, Ms. Lukosi, about this, please do feel free. Okay, on the issue of radicalization. Yes. Um, I remember I had a classmate in, um, at the law school. He was called uh, Abdul, one of the guys who was involved in the Westgate attack, mm -hmm. no, in the Garissa. Uh -huh. Yeah, in the Garissa yes. attack. Yeah. He was a law student. Okay. And he was a very bright student. Okay. So you look at it, there is, there is mm -hmm. more uh, when it comes to radicalization mm -hmm. than just employment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, okay. okay, education is mm -hmm. also, it also plays a role. There is um, unemployment. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to representation of the youth, mm -hmm we feel like we are alienated. Sometimes we have the capacities, we have the skills, we have the knowledge. We really want to, we are patriotic. We want to contribute to this, uh, to economic growth and development of the, of the country. Mm -hmm. But then we don't get the opportunity because of corruption okay. being the main issue that is really you know, crippling this country. Mm -hmm. We really need to mainstream the institutions, even the institutions that we have, the, 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 the political institutions that we have. We really need our youths to be heard. Let our voices be heard. And let us also, not just being heard, but let what we also uh, suggest, let it be implemented. Yes. Let it not just be a PR strategy. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we will talk about that in, in just a few minutes. But just to close in the topic, I see that some of the ways that the 
the policy determines to curb radicalization also deals with things to do with building resilience and reha rehabilitating affected communities through development approaches that seek to provide sustainable livelihood, as well as designing and implementing programs on countering violent extremism. So they have to design and create programs that create counter extremism and teach people, like she was saying, um, giving our youth a voice and also teaching them that this is not the path to follow. Moving right along, you mentioned something to do with patriotism, that youth want so much to belong into the governance uh, sectors of this country. And one of those ways is through electing our youth into positions. But you're saying that once they do get there, maybe their voices don't get heard. And even if they don't get there to begin with, there's an issue because there isn't any avenue for youth to come in and lead. Yes, um, that being the case, you mentioned something to do with patriotism. When I was reading through the Kenya development policy, I saw that some of the values include patriotism, things like respect of diversity and ethical values, equity and accessibility, inclusiveness, good governance, accountability, and so much more. There's a lot of values in this development policy. And now I'd really like us to get into it in detail. And I want us to in simple layman's terms, for any youth who is watching right now, how would you say this youth development policy is different from, from the previous one, the one that was written in 2006? Let's start off with that one. Um, the Kenya Youth Development Policy is a, a guideline to help the government know how they are going to promote youth interventions in its various national development uh, programs at the national and at the county level. Well, one way we see that uh, mm -hmm. this, the big difference between the first one and the second one is that uh, the first one was very broad. It was very vague in mm -hmm. terms of aligning what the ministry was saying it wants to do with the government priorities. Right now, the government priority is the big four agenda. Yes. And the, uh, the Kenya Youth Development Policy clearly uh, aligns its priorities with the big four agenda. And as well, not only the big four agenda, with the SDGs, the medium, medium term plans, the Kenya Vision 2030. And I think that is very important because mm -hmm. we have so many programs happening in the country and everyone is just thinking about different thematic areas. But if we all align our program to what the government is doing, I think we'll have more youth being mainstreamed into government programs. Mm -hmm. And another thing we see is that um, right now, the Kenya Youth Development Policy focuses more on having youth participating not just as problems in the economy, but as uh, active players in that. Uh, it recognizes that young people are very skilled, energetic, and creative, and they can be um, an important resource in the, in the society. Therefore, it promotes the need to have young people volunteer in their communities by setting out um, a, 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 a place where they say that they want to develop a, National Youth Volunteering mm -hmm. Framework. Okay. So this, this, in this way, we know that a lot of young people have so much energy, so much skill, but they don't know where to harness the energy in. Mm. So the government is prioritizing that um, volunteerism is very important for young people, mm -hmm. and and we want to engage the young people more uh, in through volunteerism in different aspects of the economy. Okay. Um, uh, lastly. Uh -huh. uh, Mm -hmm. the the I, I love this this is actually the best part of the youth development policy mm -hmm. it states that uh the ministry will develop a uh develop a kenya youth development index uh, so what the youth development index is it's that it's a a a a way of monitoring and tracking the progress made in programs that have been done by the national and the county on youth programs. So we have had a lot ah, of... So they'll be able to track and yeah, see, be able ah, to track. has there so been improvement in Yeah, has there been improvement? Has there, uh, what measures can we see so okay. that we can know that young people are getting better or young people are getting worse? Mm -hmm. So that is very mm -hmm. important because in the first <laughs> one, it was just stating uh, strategies. So right now we'll be able to measure. And by measuring, you'll have more evidence-based policy 
um, analysis in the future when it comes to the reviewing of the youth development policy. So that's what is different from the previous youth policy. I see, I see. So there's not just an implementation of a new policy, it's more of a way of even cross-checking and making yes. sure that yes. the policy has been carried has out. Been carried out. Okay, yeah. Ms. Lukosi, may I ask, what are some of the things you are looking forward to when it comes to the youth development policy? What are some of the things that, um, when you read or when you hear discussions or even following the review on the youth and politics, uh, the youth and the youth development policy, what stands out to you the most? What matters to you the most as a youth senator of Nairobi? Okay. Uh, I must commend the process and I must commend also the draft mm -hmm. because it is well aligned with uh, the constitution with the current constitution, which really emphasizes on uh, inclusivity mm -hmm. of all people, especially the marginalized groups. Yeah, like the including youth. Including the youth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Article 55 of the constitution uh, clearly outlines, um, it pushes the, the government to put in place measures mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, young people are well included and represented in uh, social, political, economic, and all other spheres of life. Okay. So with the current policy, I've scrutinized it, and uh -huh. I feel like... You've scrutinized. Yes, You've yes. not only read it, you've <laughs> scrutinized it. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. And I feel like it has really... Okay, it has tried uh, to ensure that all the... all different kinds of youths are being included. There is even a provision, I can't remember exactly which it is, mm -hmm. but then it uh, categorizes the youths mm -hmm. as educated and uneducated, male and female. Uh, uh -huh, yeah, 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 I saw there something is, about yeah, there that. Is, yeah, skilled and unskilled. Mm -hmm. And it also provides the measures to address the specific issues affecting these categories of youths. Mm -hmm. All of them marginalized and youth from marginalized communities and youth, uh, youths in the urban centers, youth in rural centers, mm. rural areas. It has captured all, mm. all manner of youth. So you've paid but attention now to the detail that then has been given. There is, there is now coordination, coordination, coordination of uh, youth, uh, the youth functions. Okay. Yeah, when it comes to governance and uh, youth representation in political processes and decision making. Mm -hmm. uh, the major institution that has that mandate is the NYC. And I'm still insisting on I NYC. Can see. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I because can see. NYC uh -huh. it stands out as one body that can actually represent us the youths. Let it be an uh, an uh, elective body. Okay. Let to anyone who does not involved. understand what the NYC has done for the youth, mm -hmm. what would you say in very short very understandable uh, words that well, you could use. Well, the National Youth Council uh, is, was established under the National Youth Council Act. Yes. With, uh, with uh, the aim of uh, ensuring youth representation and participation mm -hmm. in uh, political processes, mm -hmm. yes, and decision making mm -hmm. in government. Okay. So um, as we stand right now, I can't, okay, uh, historically, NYC, members of NYC have been appointed by the governing body, the, gov the regime. All right. Yeah. And most of the times, the people who are appointed at the National Youth Council, they are people who are paying allegiance to that uh, regime. Right, right. Yes. So it's not someone who has been voted yes, in. Yes. And they get in there, so they, you see, they only continue being loyal to the master. <laughs> yes. So at the end of the day, if they are loyal to the master, when the master says this is the way to go, they follow the master. They don't follow the interests of youth that they are supposed to be representing. So that is the issue. But if it was an independent body with its own constitution and uh, operations and uh, maybe the, the development index mm -hmm. of uh, the just... NYC, let it be independent. Okay. We could be far. Also mm -hmm. devolving 
right. the, the youth representation. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. let us have uh, the, the youth representation also devolved. We had uh, suggested that we have a, a youth advisory bodies uh -huh. in all the counties so that we can have youths being uh, um, youths in all those different uh, dimensions of life mm -hmm. being part of the, the, the youth advisory body. Okay, okay. And we can and have influence in all the decisions being made mm -hmm. at the county level. Our voice can be heard. We, we run a public particip participation mm -hmm. and our voices are heard. Okay. Yes. So for you, it's more of, uh, because we do need to wind up the topic a little bit. For you, what matters the most is there being, first of all, devolvement. Yes. Number one. Number two, there needs to be more voice given to the youth. Yes. And not through appointed leaders, but leaders who have been elected in, who have been chosen yes. by the by fellow youth yes. to say that once so and so to represent us. And as a youth senator, I do hear what you have to say. I, I have understood your point of view. And, and I need... Just an addition. Please, uh, yeah, okay, could you keep it brief? I'm winding up yeah. on the... On this uh, process for, for review, mm -hmm. we have a, a concern that... Um, the review, of, you mean of the yeah, policy? Yeah, the review. When did it started on Thursday? Yes, so yes. started on Thursday. Yes, on Thursday. It's going up to 14th. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The issue that we have is that, you know, we were not even aware. Like, it was not made uh, <laughs> public on the people <laughs> who are supposed to participate. We would have wished it be just a public participation, maybe in social halls, so that all the youth all the young people uh -huh. that feel aggrieved or they have an issue to raise, uh -huh. they can go to social halls wherever, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, and, and, and take part in it. But now we've just had people have been invited by letters. Some of them, they're not even so much interested in youth affairs. It's just who knows who. Uh -huh, and I that's see. That's a very and I'd like for you, could yes. you wind up um, her point of view? Because it, it's like you share. I can yeah. see you nodding and saying yes. yes. <laughs> so I'd like for you to wind up her point of view for her since you are on the same path. Yeah. And then I'd like to wind up our discussion. Yeah, you see, uh, if you want uh, the young people to participate in the process, you have to involve all young people. Mm -hmm. So what is currently happening is we have only invitation by <laughs> <laughs> like it invitation means you want, it's the kind of ideas that you want if, if you send letters of invitation it means then you want certain kind of ideas yeah but what we want is we want young people to be invited all and sundry all that is where now you see these letters of invitation will lead to marginalization of rural youth because it's only the elite and the urban youth will give their representation. Yes. And we go back, to we, then we are going against the, national, the mm -hmm. youth development policy. Okay. So we want a participatory process. You want a participatory, yes. participatory process. And as you have heard from our youth senator in Nairobi, Faith Lukosi, and our public policy consultant, Irene Wairimo, what they've had to share about the development policy for youth in Kenya. I'm getting the notion that we need to get more youth participating. That's what this channel is all about, for example. Um, that's what we're doing. That's what I'd love to thank you people for coming over because what you have done is you have shown our youth, number one, that they could take positions like yours. They could be able to discuss and divide and, and really give an intricate um, explanation of policies such as the development policy like you have been able to do. And so I'd like to thank you both so, so much. And as we continue on putting our faith in you, I'm putting my faith in you people, in our future leaders, and if any venue there is to vote you guys in will be able would be would love to do that and we'd love to support thank you people you. and so thank you so much for coming in thank you so much for explaining what this means to our youth thank you so much for explaining what the development policy is all about and as as we wind up i'd like to encourage you guys to continue following the review that continues on until the 14th as you've heard so that we can understand what we can do as people don't just allow the country to run you run your own country as well okay yeah don't let the country run you run your own country and so thank you so much for tuning in this has been uh, youth and politics why in the morning remember my name is joy mochache you can reach me on joy underscore mochache thank you so much coming up val is valentine wambui with a wonderful wonderful discussion on psychology on man crush monday